Hey guys, GameCubert here, and before we get to the video, I would like to cover a couple of things that I said wrong in the last video. So with the number of Steam Deck units sold, I said that there was 110,000. That wasn't for the first day, that was actually for the first hour. So, needless to say, the actual number of Steam Deck units sold is probably insane by now. I do not know if Valve is actually going to be able to output this many units, but uh, I wanted to make sure I got that out of the way so you guys knew that I wasn't being completely stupid. But obviously there's way more than 110,000 units sold. I just have no idea what the number is. Next, SteamOS is not technically dead. The Debian version is more so just not being developed, like, at all. Like, I think the last major changes were, like, in 2019 or something like that. So, as of right now, it just looks like they're kind of killing the project without really saying anything. I wasn't necessarily wrong, but there wasn't an official say of whether or not it was going to die. As of right now, my assumption is that they're scrapping the Debian version to move to Arch, and so they're kind of just using whatever they can from that project, and then they're gonna ditch it. But as of right now, it's not technically dead. Next, you can get Proton GE on Chimera OS very easily. I don't remember the exact specifications on what you can do, but needless to say, there is an alternative way that makes getting Proton GE on Chimera OS easier than other Linux distributions. So that's nice to know. Without further ado, let's get to the video. Ah, kernels. Kernels, kernels, kernels. If you haven't heard this word before, then you probably don't use Linux. The fact of the matter is that a kernel is practically necessary for any Linux distribution to be able to do almost anything. In order for your Linux distribution to actually interact with your hardware, there needs to be a kernel that supports the hardware. And essentially, unlike Windows, Linux stores most of its drivers in the kernel. So essentially, you're usually covered. So long as you're in the latest kernel version, new hardware should be able to work on your Linux distribution. There are many distributions that ship with different kernels based on different preferences. And though I'm not going to explain the inner workings of every single kernel, I can't explain to you what some of them do, and also how they affect the Steam Deck. First, let's talk about the one that you probably shouldn't install on practically any system unless you're a developer, and that is the experimental kernel. The experimental kernel is, well, not exactly really fun. The experimental kernel is strictly that experimental, so it's not smart for you to really be doing anything on there unless you're just testing things. So yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory, and as with any other kernel version, the number indicates how far ahead of the other kernels it is. So the higher the number, the more things that are added on top of it in relation to a kernel number that is lower aka kernel 5.9 is going to have less features than kernel 5.10 under most circumstances anyway there could be a circumstance where there is an issue that needs to be resolved and a functionality is taken out of the kernel but again under most circumstances higher the kernel number the more things that kernel can do then we have the good old lts kernel the long-term support kernel essentially if you have a computer and you want it to run for a very long time without having to change too much about it, run this kernel. It gets a lot of love and has a lot of security, but it doesn't necessarily work on its features at all. For the most part, the LTS kernel will have whatever features it has, and it stays nice and stable, and you also get a lot of security. It's not necessarily the cutting edge, but it's definitely a better option than... Then, of course, we have a bog standard kernel, a kernel like 5.14.7-2, which isn't technically any of these kernels, and it's kind of an in-between zone. Not nearly as unstable as the experimental, but also not nearly as feature-deprived as the LTS kernels. You get some newer features without having to compromise too much on your system's stability. Overall, a great kernel to run. You may say to yourself, Linux is open source, so why aren't there more kernels? And the answer is, there are. Anybody can compile a kernel for themselves and essentially make the core of their operating system whatever they want it to be, because, well, 
Linux is open source. As a result of this, there are many kernels that exist for different purposes. The Zen kernel, Zan mod kernel, there's just a ton of different kernels that you could technically install on your device, and all of them do various things. Some kernels are made more for servers, other kernels are made more for basic everyday desktop use. But today, we are going to talk about a particular kernel that could help with your Steam Deck and gaming. The TKG kernel. This kernel was designed in a very smart way or at least the options that you can apply to the kernel were designed in a very special way. The TKG kernel is meant to be used for people with specific hardware. If you have a Ryzen CPU, then this kernel will try to optimize your system to properly utilize that CPU. Not to say that the Linux kernel doesn't do this well, it's just not specific. Linux kernels are designed to be non-hardware specific. Essentially, if you have a Ryzen CPU, or you have a NVIDIA GPU, it doesn't necessarily matter. Every Linux kernel has the drivers for different things, and so they're going to try to just run everything. But the issue with that is there's no specification. What if, say, you want heavy optimization for that Ryzen CPU? Well, that's what the TKG kernel is for. Essentially, you select all your hardware that it offers tweaks and fixes for, and it will try to make your system run its applications and everything else faster, utilizing your hardware a bit better. Normal Linux kernels can't add in some of the fixes it makes because those fixes could possibly cause instability on other hardware, or they're just too much of a hassle to help one specific type of person. The TKG kernel is designed for a specific purpose like this, and I could definitely see the Steam Deck using it. Think about it. Almost every Steam Deck is going to have pretty much the same hardware in it aside from storage, and the TKG kernel should be able to just be installed on all these things by default. This kernel actually gives about a 5 to 10 FPS increase. I've seen a pretty good range though, but generally speaking, it never really decreases the performance of a system. In the description below, there will be a link on how you can install this kernel, but I'm not going to be teaching you this in this video. I'm mostly talking about how it actually actually affects the Steam Deck. Because, again, if you install this kernel on a Steam Deck, it should eke out even more performance without really any hits to any other parts of it. I could certainly see Valve trying to utilize a kernel like this, but the issue is it was created by someone else, so I don't really know if they're going to do that. It is practically the king of gaming. Other kernels, like the Zen kernel, don't exactly help too much with gaming performance, and for the most part, no kernel specifically is designed for gaming. Obviously there are kernels that came after the gaming revolution on Linux, but pretty much so long as you pick a reasonably new kernel, even the first LTS that you uh, have available to you, like as of right now there's 5.10.68-1, that LTS kernel should still have a ton of gaming optimizations for Linux, but Again, getting this TKG kernel to be installed by default on the Steam Deck could mean huge things for the performance. After all, in my last videos, I've stated that the performance hit from using Linux is about 10 FPS. So, if this TKG kernel can be installed, then, well, you could have the potential to remove that limitation. And who knows, even more limitations could be removed if Valve themselves knows exactly how to set up a kernel like this. I'm not even saying that Valve will use this TKG kernel, but I'm assuming they're going to have some sort of custom kernel going on here. It would be stupid to not release the Steam Tech with a kernel that actually is designed specifically for it. There would be no problems by doing that, and it would solve a lot of issues. But what do you think? Do you think the TKG kernel should be inside of the Steam Deck? Or do you think that some other kernel should be in it by default? Do you like the LTS kernel and want to see more stability? Or do you want to be on the bleeding edge and go crazy and use the experimental? Comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to get notified when my videos come out. Thank you guys for watching my videos, and it's really nice to have you guys here for the ride. I hope you enjoy more Steam Deck information in the future, and without further ado, goodbye.